Today, we've got another interesting barn find that isn't actually a barn. It's in that black doored garage on the right. This is a fantastic car, a really beautiful, big, glorious German beast, but we're in Manchester. The car has been in this family for over half a century, but it hasn't been out in the sunshine for over 30 years. And we don't entirely know the condition of it. What we do know is we're definitely gonna have a look at it and we're definitely gonna get it out. And there's a chance that we could get it running. So let's go and have a look. Welcome to The Late Break Show. I'm Johnny Smith, and it's a barn find. I don't think I need this today. This is Nick Fielding. Hi, Nick. Hiya. This is your parents' garage, right? It is. So this barn find is, it's not your car, but it's a car that's been in your family for decades. Yeah. It's older than you. It is. It's 1963. Wow. And so you've got... I, I'm actually quite shocked because when you told me about the car, uh, I don't know if it even would fit in there. I would look at that garage and think it's too big to go in there. But we're dealing with a, um, a 1963 Mercedes. 220 SEB convertible. One of the one of the most handsome convertibles ever made, I think. The thing that interests me is the fact that it was your grandfather's. Yep, he bought it in the seventies, I think. And he, and it's and he's no longer with us. No. But yet, it's your your mum and dad's house where you grew up. That's right. It's been in there for how many years? <laughs> Got to be thirty five. Really. I reckon so. Yeah, or close to. And it's and it's so it's not been on the road. It's not been on the road since. I think 80, 85, 86 was maybe the last time I think it drove here. Oh my actually. gosh. And you don't entirely know its its state, do you? No, so it, it had a body restoration done, I think the very early 90s, but nothing was done mechanically. Yeah. Um, but it's been in the garage since. So it got painted and put in there and nobody pa painted, really... Painted, put in there. We, we got it running, um, I think it was on WD-40, maybe <laughs> very late 90s. That was with my uncle. Yeah. But since then, not been not been started. Oh my gosh. So we're gonna stop talking and we're gonna go and dig this nineteen sixty-three Merc 220 SE out. Let's do it. Can I do it? Yeah. You'll need the key. I need the key. <laughs> this reminds me of my dad's garage door. It's really similar. Are you ready? That's the question. Oh, look. Oh, look at it. That's nice, isn't it? Even the church is happy about seeing a Mercedes 220 SE Cabriolet because it's a fantastic car. What? I mean, it only just fits in this blooming garage, Nick. It's massive. These were really, really quite glamorous, expensive cars, weren't they? When they were new, I believe it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know that your grandpa didn't buy this new, right? He had no, he a... bought it in the 70s. And he had a number of other cars? He certainly did. Did he? Yeah. How many? What are we talking? Like, I, I really don't know how many cars he had. Do you always remember him with an interesting car, though? He had, um, when I was a kid, he had a Mini in his conservatory. In his conservatory? In his conservatory. Oh, he was... Yeah. He was, yeah, he, he liked he was his in cars. deep. He knocked um, three foot off his kitchen. I think it was three foot, so he could extend his driveway and put a garage in the back garden. What? So he reduced the size reduced of the, the kitchen? Reduced the size of the kitchen so he could get more cars into the garden. So, okay, so we, so we had some glamorous cars. He had some regular cars. And this car here is in your parents, your old, I guess, where yeah. you grew up. Um, and it hasn't been used, what, because... Nobody, your mum and dad don't want to get rid of it, or it's a family heirloom now. I it guess, is, isn't it? it is. It's just something that hopefully they'll never get rid of. Yeah. Well, I know you They haven't so far, but I'm hoping it will never go. I really appreciate you emailing the show because you said I'm. I'm. I've, I think I've persuaded my mum to give me permission to pull it out. Yes. Yeah, so, no. After a number of years, I finally. I reckon ten to fifteen years it's taken me to convince her. 
to let me get it on the road. Because you're into cars, right? I love cars. You've got your own projects and stuff. Yeah. So you you you're 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 chumping on the bit to get this thing back yeah, on the road. Yeah, it'll just be another another project. He was telling me what cars you got. You got so you got like a really low mileage metro. Yes, yeah, so I've got an Austin metro done six thousand two hundred and one miles. <laughs> I've got um, six thousand miles from you. Yeah, every MOT That's from when pretty. it was in use, every Tats disc. Wow. I've got Mark IV Escort convertible. I've had since I was nineteen. A Ma- really? Yeah. Okay. Got my recovery truck, and then I've got. Got a, a ni- is cars. that a 90s transit? Or Ni- yeah, ni- 98 Smiley. Yeah. So we've got some good. Well, look, there's a load of fishing gear on it. Presumably, someone in your family's into fishing. Yeah, my dad. So it's been used as a fishing uh, table. It's just a store cupboard. I mean, and I didn't realise this until we turned up that there is a back door to the garage, so we'll be able to look at the back of the car in a bit. It's tight in here. So I think the plan is. We'll we'll try and get the some of the stuff off the car, uh, and then we'll work up to pushing it out into the driveway. This is a lovely quiet coldy sack area. Nobody knows this is tucked away in here apart from a neighbour, I guess. Yeah. But I just can't wait. I've, I remember the, the the quality of the chrome on the, on this era of Mercs Lego. Look, the quality of the chrome is absolutely amazing. I um I'm a big fan of these. So these. These came out, these were uh, the convertible and the coupe in 61, 1961, so the same year the Jag E-Type was born. But the car this is based on, the W111 Saloon, came out in 59, I think. Um, but these came out to sort of celebrate Mercedes Benz's 75th anniversary. I didn't know that. Because I guess you and, and, and your parents I, I don't haven't... know. What I've like. not seen it out of the garage and I don't even remember when. So you haven't seen it out of the garage since you haven't been an adult since it no. was out? No. Wow. I'm going to be really gentle with your old man's fishing gear. We're going to start uncovering it. Don't you think for a second that we fabricate things on the Late Break Show. All of the, all the dust is, is natural, isn't it? Definitely. Nick said, did you want me to sort of clear it all out? And I said, no, don't. Leave it where it is. Don't touch it. So before we tug the cloths off too much, I've got to ask, what... What's the story with the with the paint? Because it's it's properly coming off in sheets. It's we, we it's, don't know. It was it was sent away to have paint work done. Yeah, and it was fine for a few years, and then it just started it's cracking. Like, it's it react- just started with cracks. I mean, look at this. And then it's weird, isn't so it? It will it will get done. But before it was painted and stuff. It was used. Yeah, oh, absolutely. My granddad used it up until he, he passed away. Wow. And when did he die? Mid-80s. Right, okay. Yeah, I think the, la- the last time I say, I think I've got it inside, it was either, 80, either 84, 85 or 86. Crumbs. And he, he had it MOT the year he passed away. So you were really young? Yeah, I was only, only young. I think I was five. Right, okay. Gosh. Well, let's do it. Let's see what it's really like. Take this, we'll put it over there, yeah. Let's tug this one off. So we can actually see that it is a cabriolet. And it's got some stuff in it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, there's some boxes. Oh, some of my old stuff in there. Yeah, there's a (laughs) steering wheel and some lights and such a, such a handsome, strong identifier. I mean, people refer to this era, certainly the, the saloons as the fintail yeah, like all the stack headlight era, but um, it, they didn't really have proper fins. Not like American cars. No, well, but, this um, one hasn't got any. Yeah, it just sort of yeah. goes down. But the, the saloon was. But yeah, well, should we? But actually, should we have a look and see what the engine's like? I'm trying to remember what's the. Oh, it's a bit of insulation now that my me, me dad put on it years ago. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, there you go. That's clever. Don't knock your head on it. Yeah, you don't want to bet. Oh my gosh, this is. This is actually pretty good, Nick. Uh, so I said my uncle did a few bits to it and 
it looks like he'd, I thought he put a new cap HT on it in Leeds. Leeds. Yeah, yeah. That will have been either very late nineties at the earliest, early two thousand. But I think it was the nineties. It's such an instantly recognisable um, cam cover, I think, on this on this era of Merck engines. Lovely long straight six. The casting on there. I think I've made a few notes, actually. I think this is the M one two seven engine. So. This one's 2,195 cc, fuel injected, uh, early days of fuel injection, 118 horsepower, apparently. Really? Yeah, 118 horsepower. Yeah. So I had a quick look at stats for these because I'm just interested in stuff like this. The 250, this is the 220, the 250 engine came out in, in 1965, the 280 came out in 67, and the 350, the V8, was from 1969. Um, in 10 years of production, from 61 to 71, which is when they made these, they made 16,900 coupes and cabriolets collectively. But between 61 and 65, they only made 2,729 uh, cabrios. It's nothing, that is no. it? No, and I think we are talking about only 300-ish, 400-ish right-hand drive cars of this era. It really Amazing. was not, the, 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 you know, this, this makes it rare. And are, because they're so much heavier, they were, I know they had servo-assisted brakes, but the servo's remote. The servo's here. You'd expect it to be there where the brakes and yeah. things were, but because, of course, it was used to being a left-hand drive car and all the fuel injection and inlets over here, it's kind of arse about face a little bit. Anyway, obviously no battery on it, because that's good, because it would have dripped and yeah. killed loads of stuff. Is that the bin man? I reckon the bin men yeah. here. It's bin day today. It's definitely not bin day for this. It might be starting day. We'll see. I think, Nick, let's pop round the back and pull some of the rags off the back of it. It's fascinating. We can use some water out of the pond. Yeah. <laughs> put, in, put in the rags. There's a nice pond around the back. Come and follow me. I think today combines my two favourite things. Interesting old cars that have been left derelict for a while. And pondfish, some beautiful koi in here. Anyway, we digress. Let's go around the back of the garage. Okay. Got some bits to clear out there, Nick. But we've got a number plate. It's such a pretty design, I just think. I mean, that's as, that's as fin, finny as the fintail Merc got, but... 393 LNP. But again, the chrome looks good, actually. I reckon it, it'll survive. Let's get this stuff off and pull this convertible out. What is in here, oh. Nick? Videos. Childhood tapes. Teenage Mutant nin Hero Turtles, of course. And, and Mel Gibson's Braveheart. I was totally expecting that to be in there. <laughs> my brother's, my brother's favourite film of all time, The Hunt for the Red October. Brilliant. Oh, well, should, we, uh, should we get the crates of videos out? Yeah, let's get them out. I like the number plate and the uh, fuel filler. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very American style. Is this an exciting day for you? It's a day I've wanted to do for a lot of years. Is it? Yeah. Do you want a hand? No, no, you're all right. You sure? Yeah. As the bell chimes... I love the fact that, that your grandpa had a tow bar on that. He used to go caravanning with that. Yeah. That's the most glamorous tow car. <laughs> Feels like you're resuscitating. 30. Got some pressure in that vessel, haven't you, Nick? Yeah. <laughs> this thing's seven just, bar I put this in tire's it. just shot up. I think we've been lucky. I've just put air in all four tires and they're all still up. 
So that bodes well. Yeah. Um, the roof's better than I thought it would be. You, you, it's better than I thought. I'd, I was convinced it needed no, pro- a proper I don't re-skin. think it's, it's not knackered. But we'll, we'll, we're going to try and get it out into the sun for the first time in 30... It's got to be 30 years. Yeah. At, at least 30 years. And we'll have a good nose around it then. We can get inside it because I can see some trinkets in there. This is, um, I've had this car two days. And I'm already going to do some serious towing with it. Welcome to the Late Break Show, where we know no danger. Right, let's see if we can gently... You definitely think it's hooked on that wishbone? Yeah. Yeah, go on. All right. How far from the wall am I there? You're about 10 inches, a foot maybe. Oh, you beauty, look at you. Oh, you sexy thing, you stuck headlight sexy thing. Oh, look at it. Bit of sunshine for the cabrio. Oh, that's freed. Yeah? I think I heard the wheel free. I did. Yeah, freed. It's free. Yay. Well, we've pulled the bends out. You can see one wheel was a bit stubborn. This tire here was obviously seized and it's dragged out and, uh, and it's come up uh, uh, unseized. Yeah, so it's freed off now. We've left the remnants of your youth. This is my youth on here, yeah. Of cherry bomb exhaust. Yeah, I used to do straight through exhaust for all my mates. Did you? Yeah, did straight through conversions on all the exhaust, make them louder. <laughs> so you've never seen the garage like this? Not since. The very early 90s when it went away. When it went to be yeah, painted? that's the last time Bloody hell. I've seen the garage like this. Bloody hell. So I don't know what's going on in the pit, but the car's out and now we can have a look inside it and maybe have a think about seeing if the engine will turn. We've got the car out and the, um, the dust is gradually being blown into the air. There is sign of rodents, residents. Uh, we've got monkey nuts down there. We've got mouse plop over here. I'm hoping, because the interiors on these are stunning, you can see uh, they, they kind of remodeled the dash from memory on the convertible and the coupe to be different from the saloon. So it was more like the, the SLs. And it's real wood. Can you see all this binnacle? It's, it's actually real wood, real wood veneer. Just look at that gear knob. And the thing about this model, the, 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 this era of Mercedes, the cappings and everything, is chunky chromed metal, or it might be stainless, I think it's chrome. And here, I mean, the weight of that door is wonderful. So I think we'll have a quick look. The hubcaps are in there, you're right. So the missing hubcaps are in here. There's a box. I think Nick should uh, take this box on the passenger seat out. We've got 80s Ford bits. Genuinely, you could probably sell that for quite a lot now. XR2. Yeah, XR2 steering wheel, that one. XR2. Uh, it looks like, though, you, you did say that you thought your uncle had done some work on it to try and get the car yeah, running. Yeah, get, try to get it running, yeah. So I can see there's some there's some wiring which has been pulled down from the from down uh, un- underneath the dash, and the electric um, fuel pump at the rear has been re- has been dropped down. So maybe we'll see if we can get that operational. Is that a tape player? That's a period I think tape. it's just, yeah, it is period oh. tape player only. And then the, the radio above it with only long wave and medium wave, no FM. Brilliant. But there's, there's loads of Merc bits. Any sign of a manual? Yeah. Because the thing that scares me is understanding the fuel injection. Oh my gosh, we've got service. a proper, proper German yeah. service book. It's a proper Mercedes service manual, dated um, August 59. Wow. Wow. So 59 is when the saloon car came out, the W111. But as I said, the convertibles and the coupe started in 61. But they ran till later. Let's see if the roof goes back. Not electric, so... (laughs) 
<laughs> it's heavy, isn't it? It's Very. a big, it's a beautiful piece. These beautifully machined. Won't go much further Don't, than that. We've got some, there's some trim and stuff yeah. in, under there, isn't there? Do you know what? The more I look at this car, I think it's one of these cars that looks way worse than it really is. I know it's had some stuff removed for the paint job and never put back on. The paint job looks terrible. It looks like Hopefully. it's... Hopefully, yeah, it just wants rubbing back and yeah. painting again. It looks like an import from Arizona or some hot state in the state. It does not look like a Manchester car. No. Oh, Other wow. Oh, these are Bosch, aren't they? Or are they... No, no tech. I love... It's there off the front bumper. They're great. Look at those. So great. I forgot they were there. There's definitely been uh, a rodent living in there. There's been one in here, I think. Oh, blue and But... So you've got brand new calipers. Brand new calipers. That's useful, because I know they're expensive. So you've got brand new calipers. Nice. That's nice. You're going to need them. I know, definitely. <laughs> and they're not cheap on Mercs. Rear calipers on 123s are really, really expensive. Okay, we've got some nice stuff in here. And the Ford stuff you can keep. Bloody hell. Old fashioned speaker. Auto sound. And some odds and sods. We'd um, have to just see which bits are Ford. Bit of a mixture from, from cars that I've broke, I think. Really? Yeah. I've That'll be when it was all changed at the distributor. Right, let's let's get, let's get this open, get that box out, and then we'll have a look at the floors. But where are, wherever I'm looking, you know, Nick, it looks solid. Like, I just hope it continues. Like, and and even this these seats, because I know this is real leather, and the the quality of the interior in these is really good. All right, just getting it over that. Yeah. I found the windscreen wipers. I just saw them then. Yeah, I was wondering whether, again, it's another thing that's been removed for the repaint and it was never put back on. So, last floor pan to check. This one's pretty manky with the, the, on the mats, but look at the condition of, it's just a bit of soundproofing. You've got, you've got a really, really solid convertible here. I think what we should do is see about whether we can get the fuel pump to fire up. Yeah, so we're going to move and Maybe put some fresh fuel in it, we'll check what fuel we got and see if we can get it to fire. Sounds like a plan. You have got a manual, I haven't have. you? Oh my gosh, we've got the doomsday book. Injection engine type 22-0 SEB. Oh my gosh, it's... Look at this. This is the real deal. This is official Mercedes-Benz literature. This is this is very valuable, especially for putting the car back on the road, as was. Yeah. And not only that, Limonet, Nick. Look. One, two. I didn't know all this was in there, though. Look. One, two, three, four... Five, what? 1960, 61, 60, and the own. here we go, the owner's manual. The original, oh my gosh, look at that, with the reg of this car. Yeah, gosh, and you didn't know about this stuff. I didn't know about them. I had a feeling about the, the service manual, but not them. Oh, he's, he's kept it all. He's written the serial numbers of all the keys for what they do. Ah. Oh. This stuff is important. This stuff's properly important. Brilliant. Okay, we've got lots of literature to read on. I know what you're going to be doing at, into, in your winter's nights <laughs> at the end of this year. That's incredible. Just checking um, the fuses in these beautiful fuse box on these cars. It's really well made, really good quality. You're going to stick the battery on. We're not going to try and crank it over. We just want to switch the ignition on to see if we get the fuel pump starting to buzz away. And I might undo the fuel line at this end 
just so it doesn't stop putting fuel into the engine. Anytime I go to a barn find, I always pack a little bit of a first aid kit because you never know. You never know if you might get it going or not. I've just brought my normal go anywhere tool kit. I've got contact cleaner, um, different sizes of fuel line, couple of fuel filters, WD-40, naturally, easy start, uh, and a few other bits. Got some lights on the dash. Yeah, I just heard a solenoid. Yeah, if you do that one more time, I'm gonna listen out for where that is. Oh my gosh. Wow. Again. Yeah. Well, starter works. Right, yeah. I'm doing it, going for it now. Okay. Not hearing or feeling any uh, connection here. I'm wondering whether to give it a little squirt of easy start and see what at it does. The, at the front? Yeah. We could run it off a can, gravity feed it from a can. Yeah. My gosh. Okay, we've just had a bit of a strange situation. While we were trying to think about me gravity feeding the engine fuel, bypassing the fuel pump that wasn't seemingly working, you might have left the ignition on one click. Yeah. We heard, suddenly heard a gurgling noise and the fuel pump was working and it's primed it and started pumping fuel through. So the fuel pump does work, which Most means things. I yeah. could take off the pipe that's horrible, that's pulling it's it from the it. tank, put it into a gallon can, suck fresh fuel in, and run it as a normal car, albeit from a can. Hopefully. Shall we? Give it a whirl. I don't know if you can see this from under here, I'll try and get a shot, but basically the, the, the fuel pump is, um, I can pull it down, it, it, is, it was hanging. It had been removed from its little cradle, heat like this. Um, the pipe, the fuel line that feeds it, from the tank, which is there. Look at it, it's frail, it's like a zombie's arm. Look at it, it's really, really knackered. And it's, I think, not actually been delivering any petrol, but we don't know how much petrol is in the tank. So before I pull it off, I want to check that I'm not gonna get totally sprayed with old petrol. Um, and then we'll put another pipe on, but fed from a gallon can. Okay, here comes the old fuel. That's not too bad. It's it's probably a touch small, however, as we're not driving, and we will only be idling at best, I think. Do you know what? I reckon that might work. So we're bypassing the fuel tank, new piece of fuel line onto the electric fuel pump, which we think now definitely works. This. This goes into a fresh gallon. I'm gonna be at the front with some easy start. We're just gonna switch it on now and see if it primes up. It wants to run. So we, you haven't got like piles of service history for it, but you do have obviously those incredible manuals that we found in the boot. Yeah, and just a few bits and pieces MOT we got, wise. So he bought it in the 70s. Yep. And then you said your uncle tried to um, put some new bits and get the car running in the mid 90s, mid -90s early 90s. Mid 90s it's looking like, yeah, about 95 I reckon. So that's when it, but that was when it was still in here, still but you he tried here. to start it. Yeah, not driven though. Okay, not driven. But I love the, the the fact that it's done, what, like 90-something thousand miles? Yeah. 90-something thousand miles. You've got a load of old um, MOTs from the 70s and 80s. Yeah, the oldest one I think we've got, 73 to 74. Okay. So it was done in 73. Yeah, yeah. It was on uh, 47,000 miles then. 
in 73. It's a 63 car, so it's 10 yeah, years so old. It's 10 years old. Okay. 47,000 miles. And then show me this because I keep catching this. It's this picture my mum dug out. Um, it was taken in Spain when they took the car away on holiday. That's so and cool. And then th is this your. This is my granddad uh, when he was younger. So he had a Rolls Royce. Yeah, over time. Yeah. Apparently bought it for his fourth. He bought it himself for his fortieth birthday. <laughs> but he's beating both of us then. Yeah, I have got a Rolls me. Royce and I'm over forty now. So it wasn't a new one, obviously. No, but he liked. Obviously, liked his sort of older yeah. stuff. He liked tinkering. Mm. And your uncle liked tinkering. Yeah. But your dad wasn't he's not interested. Bothered, no. But you are. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Hence the bits that we found: cherry yeah. bomb exhaust and stuff. It's brilliant. Doing bad boy bonnets for your yeah. mates for a few quid. I love that. This is nice. This is, that's a fantastic photo. You've got to recreate that. I'd love to. Take it over there, find the hotel. That and take be, a picture next to it. You, because... It's fine, isn't it, though? I don't know where it is. They never stayed at that hotel. My mum reckons he went driving and found it. And, and just to get... Just to take the picture. <laughs> love it. She said... Um, when they were staying in the hotel, she only told me this the other day. He used to go out and wash the car outside. On holiday? While he was on holiday. Went and washed the car outside. So this was his favourite car by, yeah. by a mile? Yeah. And he'd, he'd go out while he was on holiday and wash the car outside. That's so cool. And that's why this car has to stay with you, yeah. guys, doesn't it? It's got, it's, got to, it's got to see the road again. That's, that's how I feel. And from what I've seen today, apart from the fact, obviously, the paint is pretty awful and it's flaking off. Actually, the the, the structure of the car... The, the body seems absolutely solid. It seems really good. Because I've not seen it out like this in my adult life. No. Um, it's it's as good as I was hoping. Yeah. I can see you're, yeah. you're itching to get cracking with it, aren't you? And I will be doing. <laughs> <laughs> Order a carpet set. Mm. Get the fuel injection rebuilt. Get, get it running first on the key. Yeah. And then what start you thinking about that. Yeah. Yeah. Make I love sure the fact that... It starts and stops. These are my favourite barn finds where somebody's already started buying the parts. Yeah. So and the car hasn't been too badly dismantled, so you've lost stuff. Yeah, exactly. So it seems like everything's there, or near enough everything's there. Yeah. Um, just once putting back together properly. Drive it scabby for a bit. Yeah. That, that's what I want to do. I'd, I'd happily drive it like this. Drive it scabby, and as long as you've rust-proofed it where it counts, mm. you're only going to use it in the summer anyway. Yeah. And then you can come around to the idea of restoring it another day. I love it. It's such a... You know, these were... This era of Mercedes were designed by a Frenchman, not a German. I've forgotten his name. Paul Brack, a Frenchman who, who, who actually designed the W108, uh, the W114, the 600 Pullman limousine that all, oh, really? that all the dictators loved. Yeah, he, he, And then he had 10 years at Mercedes, then went to BMW to become their chief designer, designed the M1 predecessor, the Turbo Coupe, uh, the E23 7 Series, the E24 6 Series, and the 1600 TII. Paul Brack, Proper he knows research. how to style a car. Basically, all the cars he's turned his hand to are now bona fide classics. Doesn't it look glorious? I absolutely love it. I mean, with all of its flaky paint and dust, it kind of looks like it's been pulled out of the desert in Nevada or somewhere, but it hasn't. It's been living in Manchester for decades. The last place you'd expect it to be, but so well preserved. And we managed to get it running. It, it wanted to fire almost immediately. We couldn't get it to run for very long, but I know it's spurring Nick on to go through it and recommission it, possibly drive it as it is, but mechanically redone. I hope you've enjoyed this Barn Fine episode. Our Barn Fine playlist is sponsored proudly by Adrian Flux. Um, do you know of a car that's languishing in a hedge, in a barn, in a garage, in a carport, wherever? Let me know in the comments. That would be fantastic. Or get in touch through the show's website. Cheers.